there's a reasonable chance I'm not going to review every pachinko game out there, as, boy howdy, they're all much of a muchness. I'll decide when I get to each of them whether there's any merit in discussing their finer points, or whether I simply refer to them in the Other Japanese Exclusive section at the end of the book. You won't be surprised to learn that they're all JP exclusives, because there's a good chance you don't even know what Pachinko is. For the unfamiliar, Pachinko is a Japanese physical arcade game somewhere between a slot machine and a pinball table without the flippers. Each board features a spiral layout with holes, bumpers and slots, and you fire balls into it with various strengths, letting gravity do the work. You'll get something like, say, a hundred balls to start with, and more can be earned in various ways. I'd surmise it's more luck-based than pinball, but I might get roasted for saying so. Like I say, there were a lot of pachinko games on the Game Boy, and as far as I can remember at this point, they were all Japanese-only cartridges. I'm picking this one out because it's the earliest, and it gives me a good chance to write a bit about the subject. There is some semblance of a story here. You play as what looks like a ball bearing with arms and legs. You start on the northwest square of a map screen with several buildings. These represent various pachinko parlors, of which there are eight in total. You'll need to try to make it to the goal at the southeast. Various bridges between parlors are broken initially, and can only be repaired by scoring enough points on tables that you have access to already. Each parlor has 12 pachinko machines. For some reason, labelled 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 15. I have no idea where the missing numbers are, but there it is. You'll need to beat three per parlour to leave, but more will have to be completed in order to fix all the bridges. On each machine, there are two numbers. The left tells you how many balls there are left, and the right shows a number, around 2,000 at the start, that you need to try to reduce to zero. You hold left or right to alter the power of your ball launcher, with the aim of getting the balls into the slots. If you can get the balls into the large slot in the middle, the number will decrease even faster. The game has very little to offer in the way of skill. With no visual indicator of your power bar, you don't really know how much strength you're applying, and of course, the gravity acts on the balls in a random way anyway. Randomness is simulated pretty well as it happens. Hold A and speed up time by a hundred times on an emulator, and watch how little of a pattern these shots do actually follow. You'd think that given enough results over time, things would tend to some sort of average, but they don't. I'll have to ask my physicist friends what that means. Anyhow, I'll maybe have a more in-depth look at a couple more Pachinko titles as we go along, but I can't promise they'll be any more interesting than Pachinko time.